And so, just one more thing. Let's see, Chris is, as I said, Chris is away, and he's not working today. Helen's away, and she's not working today. Zoom, in, in sympathy for Chris and Helen, decided it should be away, and it's not work, it wasn't working today. And now, the lavalier mic, um, for the second time in a month, is, has decided it needs a day off as well. Um, so, we're just going to be a little challenged. Um, we're going to get worship started. Uh, please read the things that were on the screen if you were out in Zoom world and didn't hear all of what I had to say to you this morning. Um, okay, so we're going to get started. Yelena, are you going to play through this? Yeah. Okay, so Yelena's going to play through our gathering song, and then we will sing it twice, and the second time I will invite you all to stand. Welcome, 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 welcome in the name of Christ. Come in gladness, come in sadness, seeking friendship, hope, and meaning. Welcome in the name of Christ. Welcome, 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 welcome in the name of Christ. Come in gladness, come in sadness, seeking friendship, hope, and meaning. Welcome in the name of Christ. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If I had cherished evil in my heart, God never would have listened. But God certainly did listen and heard the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God who never turned a deaf ear. Blessed be God who stayed with me, loyal in love. Yelena is going to play through, and we usually play all the way through these. So Yelena is going to play through the psalm, and then we will sing it. No, the psalm. We're the next piece. Oh, Yep.
God show mercy to us and bless us with your grace and cause to shine upon us the brightness of your face so thou way most holy on earth may soon be known and unto every people your saving grace be shown let all the peoples praise you let all the nations sing in every land let praises and songs of gladness ring for you will judge the peoples in truth and righteousness and on the earth all nations will your just will confess let all the peoples praise you let all the nations sing then earth in rich abundance to us its fruit will bring for god our god will bless us our god will blessing send and all the earth will worship to its remotest end beloved in christ our lord jesus has his arms open wide with grace for you May our love be shared in Christ Jesus. Please be seated for prayer. And let us now confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven, living out the promise of our baptism. Let us do all this using the prayer that you find in your bulletins or on your screens. Let us pray. O oh God, who loves us, who made us to be good, and who shows us what is good, we confess that we often shy away from doing justice. Lord, have mercy. We confess that we often neglect to love kindness. Christ, have mercy. We confess that we often forget to walk humbly with you. Lord, have mercy. As we rise to the light of a new day, rise new in our hearts, O God. As we greet one another again, call us to begin again our covenant journey. As we break the fast of the night, Help us break the cycle of sin in our lives. Hear these words that we may trust from the prophet Isaiah. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? As a mother comforts her child, so God will comfort us. Believe this good news and live in peace. God has shown us what is good. And what does the Lord require? That we do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. No, no, Jesus is the rock. Do you have a bulletin there? Oh. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. 
Jesus is the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. And so we hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Work together, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one another with a hand of fellowship and the peace of Christ. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock, the rock that lasts. Jesus is the rock that lasts. My soul has found a resting place. Jesus is the rock that lasts. Okay, I think we're starting to get, get settled into this, and I hope that we can get through the rest of worship with no more special surprises. May it be, may it be so. May it please God. I welcome you all again, though, to worship. This is the time where um, we share with young children, especially today, young children who may be out in Zoom world, um, before we have Bible stories and all of that in worship. And if you're just young at heart and you want to, especially out in Zoom world where we can't see you, you want to be listening carefully to this and have your paper and pencils ready for the sermon time, go right ahead. I will be happy to have you do that. Okay, here's what I want us to think about. Anybody ever have a pet? Maybe you've got a dog at home or a cat, or you've got even a fish. You like your pet, don't you? You get really fond of your pet. It's hard to get too fond of fish because, you know, you can't pet them and stuff. Um, unless you have a cat and the cat might try to pet them, but then the cat also takes them out of the tank and takes care of them for you. But um, when we have dogs and cats, we really like them. We take care of them. They're part of the family. And we probably start off when we have dogs and cats. I know we always do at my house when we get a new dog. Um, we start off with a rule. We're not going to feed this dog from the table. That's the rule. And then we wait to see how long the rule lasts. My wife and I do. Um, and if, invariably, somewhere along the way, we start feeding the dog at dinner time, giving the dog little scraps. Because the dog is part of the family, too. And we don't want the dog to be left out. Now, we have to be careful, otherwise our dog gets fat. But um, we still do it. Just we're very careful about how much anymore. In our Bible story today, we are going to hear about a woman who's going to say, doesn't the dog get crumbs from the master's table? In other words, don't you feed the dog from the table? And this is because Jesus is going to, this woman is not from Israel. She is a Canaanite woman. She lives, she lives in the area, but she's not one of the people of God. And Jesus is going to say, well, I was only sent to help the people of God because this woman has a daughter who needs help. And Jesus says this to try to test her. 
and to try to get her to see what she'll do if he says, well, maybe you can't have, have this. And she just tries even harder. And she says, don't even the, even the dogs get crumbs from the master's table. So I want you to listen for that because we're going to talk about, yes, and Jesus is going to help this woman, not because she's a dog, but because she shows faith. And she doesn't even let Jesus kind of telling her no for a minute, stop her from having faith. And that's the, that's the most important part in all of this. She has faith. Jesus sees her faith. And there are some other people in this story. They're Pharisees who are very important religious people. And I'm going to tell you about them and about how they obey lots and lots and lots and lots of rules. And there are religious scholars, and they're all going to be saying, well, why don't, your dis why don't your disciples follow all the rules everybody else does? And this is also about, it may, they make it about eating because they saw the disciples eat some food without washing their hands first. And there was a rule about that, just like there's probably a rule at your house. And except that at your house at dinner time, if you start eating without washing your hands, I'll bet Jesus doesn't come and say that you don't have to. I'll bet instead your mom or your dad says, nope, go back to the bathroom, go wash your hands, come back. Well, they're going to be talking about that. And Jesus is going to talk about how, you know, obeying the rules isn't the only thing. And that it's not what goes into a person, the food before you wash your hands or the right kind of food, that's the most important for God. It's what comes out of a person. How do we act? So I want you to listen to this in the story and be thinking about how is it that we act? How do we make sure that we get at least the crumbs? And how, and how do we remember that everybody gets God's love, not just the people who think that they're special? Okay, so I want you to listen for that. And then you can draw pictures about the story or about how that happens in our own lives, or even maybe about how you feed your dog from the supper table and don't tell anybody. Now, before we have Bible stories in church, we always say a prayer. And at the end of the prayer, we always say amen. So the grownups are going to help me with the prayer. And then at the end of the prayer, you say amen with all the rest of us. Okay, let's pray. God, your word comes with powerful surprises. Open our minds to your word. God, your word comes needing nurture. Open our hearts to your word. God, your word comes to change our world. Open our lives to your word. Oh God, let your word come now. And we all say, Amen. Listen for a word from God in this story from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Pharisees and religious scholars came to Jesus all the way from Jerusalem asking, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. He answered them, and why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say, if you tell your father or mother, everything I'm expected to contribute to you, I'm giving to God as a gift, then you don't have to honor your father or your mother. You cancel God's command by your rules. You hypocrites. Isaiah really knew what he was talking about when he prophesied about you. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me. They just use me as a cover for teaching whatever suits their fancy. Then he called the crowd to, to him and said to them, listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's, not, it's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates the person. Later his disciples came and told him, did you know how upset the Pharisees were when they heard what you said? He answered, 
every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by its roots. Forget them. They are blind people who are guides to blind people. But if a blind person leads another blind person, they will both fall into the ditch. But Peter said, I don't get it. Put it in plain language. Jesus said, don't you understand yet? Don't you know that everything that goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what goes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And that's what contaminates a person in God's sight. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These contaminate a person in God's sight. Not eating without washing one's hands properly. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. They had hardly arrived when a Canaanite woman came down from the hills and pleaded, Have mercy on me, master, son of David. My daughter is cruelly afflicted by an evil spirit. Jesus ignored her. The disciples came and complained, Now she's bothering us. Would you please take care of her? She's driving us crazy. Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. Then the woman came back to Jesus, dropped to her knees and begged, Master, help me. He said, it's not right to take bread out of children's mouths and throw it to dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table. Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then, her daughter was healed. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. If you want to know what people, what privilege looked like, I should say, if you want to know what privilege looked like in first century Palestine, look at the Pharisees. They were well-to-do males from the dominant culture in Jerusalem. They had to be people of financial means, you see, in order to have time to fulfill the 613 commandments that are found in the Torah, which one must do to be a Pharisee is fulfill all those laws, all those rules. The Roman authorities, because they were rich and because they dressed nicely, and because they spent time at the temple, the Roman authorities would probably leave them alone most of the time. And while most of them probably meant well, it also probably never occurred to them that the reason Jesus' disciples or other people didn't engage in ritual hand washing was that they didn't have the time or the resources to do so, because it wasn't just wash your hands wherever you could wash your hands, but wash your hands in the special bowl that you never use for anything except washing your hands, and carry it around with you all the time if you're going to wash your hands, if you're going to eat. These are difficult things. But while they went to all this effort to make themselves more holy, they could have actually been helping others helping their parents, helping poorer disciples. The Canaanite woman, on the other hand, at the other end of the story, was the very definition of an outcast. She was a Gentile, and the very word Gentile means outsider. And she was a woman, having no legal rights in that society. On top of all of that, she was poor, in part probably because she was a Gentile and a woman. So often, even today, one societal disadvantage takes away a person's access to other kinds of privilege. It never occurs to this Canaanite woman that the privileged people would consider her worthy of anything but she had probably heard good things about this Jesus. And, he, and she hoped he would care about her little girl. 
when the teacher took on the appearance of privilege, ignoring her and then challenging her assertiveness, this woman stood up, not for herself, but for her child and for all other outcast people. She acted on faith and did it not for herself, but for others. This was what came out of her. Just as condescension and hypocrisy came out of the Pharisees. And this was what mattered. Even though they were all talking about what went in, they were all talking about eating. This, of course, is the point Jesus was making to Peter and to the rest of them. And Matthew, at least, seemed to get it because his gospel puts these two stories together. Now, if you want to know what privilege looks like in 21st century America, look around. The ones who look like me, the white males, are the most privileged. But certainly none of us who are white here are limited by anything except maybe by money. And all of us here, if we're here of any color, are very privileged by the standards of most of the people on earth. We all have indoor plumbing. We all have toilet paper in our indoor plumbing, I'll bet. We all have at least fans to keep us cool, and most of us have air conditioning. We don't sleep outside in the rain. We are very privileged by the standards of most of the people on earth, even if we don't think so. And so we, who don't really think of ourselves as privileged, we have to be careful to not forget that life for the rest of the world isn't like life for us. We have to be careful not to expect everyone who can give the, that every, we, to not expect that we, everyone else, can give the way we can give. I can get that sentence in the right order. And we must not forget that we often benefit from our own kindnesses. For example, we get to deduct them on our taxes. We must be very careful to remember to try to step away from our own privilege, to listen to the perspectives of others, and, not, and to not assume that our perspectives are automatically right. We must work to put ourselves on the outside with so much of the world, not as tourists, but as fellow travelers, seeing no better than anybody else does, but trusting that we can all help each other get through. We must always remember that it's what comes out of us that shows our faithfulness. And we must never forget that no matter what happens, we all deserve to feast on the same grace. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yellen is gonna play through the hymn and then we'll all sing. Selfish.
strive. We hear your voice, O Son of Man, in haunts of wretchedness and need, one shadowed threshold fraught with fears from paths where hide the lures of greed we catch the vision of your tears from tender childhood's helplessness from human grief that of your grace let long these multitudes to view the sweet compassion of your face O Master from the mountainside make haste to Heal these hearts of pain Among these restless throngs abide O oh, tread the city streets again Till all the world shall learn your love And follow Trod, till glorious from your hand above shall come the city of our God. Please be seated. Again, I welcome everybody to worship, and I'm glad you're here. We are coming to the time when we will share our joys and concerns before we share our offerings and then share in prayer. And so I invite folks who are out in the Zoom world who might have joys to share or concerns to um, unmute. If you're on a phone out in Zoom world, you do that by pressing star six. And while you're all doing that and getting ready, I'm going to just share a few other announcements here. Um, today is the last day to um, submit suggestions for our hymn sing on September 3rd. Some folks have submitted suggestions, so I've got some. But if you don't, I, I, am, I am not Karnak. If I stick the envelope up to my forehead, I do not read your minds, so... Um, if you don't tell me what your suggestions are, we're not going to look at them and we're not going to be able to use them at all. So please do that. Um, this afternoon at three o'clock, the Hopewell Jazz Ensemble will give a concert at First Presbyterian Church of Titusville as part of that church's 185th anniversary. And at both the front and back doors, there are little flyers about the church's anniversary, which is today. So we'll keep them in prayer as well. But um, we have to remember to um, go to the concert if we'd like to. And you'll have to look in the flyer for more information. Okay, um, next Sunday we'll be here in, in between the Heritage Day task Force has a meeting on Tuesday at noontime via Zoom. And on Saturday is the food distribution at Bayard Street Presbyterian Church. 
So that will be going on. Um, helpers are always welcome. Next Sunday, we'll be here for worship. And then again, we'll be here for worship on September 3rd. And that's when we'll have our hymn sing. So all those things are going on. The task force is getting ready for um, Heritage Day in North Brunswick, which will be Saturday, October 7th. We're going to have a booth there from our church since we're new in the neighborhood. Um, and we want folks to get to know us. We're going to need helpers for that. We're going to need helpers with setting up and taking down. We're going to need people who can take turns sitting at the booth for a couple hours at a time so that nobody has to be there all day. So be watching because right around Labor Day, we'll start really asking and getting people to sign, sign up and not just nice asking where Pastor James stands up in front and says something and you can all ignore him. But the kind of asking where session members are going to come and find you and say, can you do this time on this day? So be ready. We're still collecting beans till the end of the month for, the, for Bayard Street for the food distribution. And of course, any other non-perishable foods, and they all go up here by the door. Um, what's next month? Do we know? Soup. soup is next month. So it'll be soup next month. Um, you'll be seeing a new flyer soon about that. Okay, is there anybody we need to especially remember in our prayers this week? We're really quiet. Oh, okay, hang on. Remember, they can't hear you unless... Oh, okay, we need to remember the people of um, Hawaii that's um, dealing with the wildfire and uh, the death toll keep going up. So let us keep them and their families and also the wildfires in Canada. Yes. Yes, the victims of fires in um, Hawaii, in Maui, and in Canada, now in the Northwest Territories. Um, also, the, keep the people of Baja, California, so in Mexico, and then Southern California in your prayers because the tropical storm is hitting them now. And unlike us who say, oh, a tropical storm, isn't this inconvenient? They don't normally have this, so it's a big deal for them. Anybody else? Sam. Yeah. Prayers of healing to my mother's sister who, who is currently sick in Ghana. Her name is Efia. Efia? Yeah. Okay. That's your mother's sister? Yeah. Okay. So his aunt. As all of you can see, Helen is not here this morning because her son Travis is up from Baltimore and she and Stan are spending the weekend with him. It's just wonderful to know that all of us who have family that don't live close by are able to come and visit us once in a while. And I had an experience yesterday that just overjoyed me and I wrote to Econ about it. Um, as you know, my granddaughter turned 18 last Thursday, and Kiara was overjoyed because now she can vote, a privilege that all of us have. And it may seem small to you, but you know we've ins tried to instill in her how important it is to register to vote, and she's really excited about this. But yesterday, she called me and said, can I come up and visit you? And it was the first time she drove by herself from Tom's River up to my house. And I spent two hours with her and it just brightened up my day. It was just wonderful. So I hope that Helen is having a great time with Travis as I did with Kiara yesterday. And just one other thing about the uh, food pantry. The last few months, three or four months, they have run out of food. And so the 100 families that come are not always able to get a full bag of food when they leave. Please, please remember to bring your canned goods each Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And uh, Rita? Yeah, uh, 
Um, one more prayer of thanksgiving for um, God's travel message back from our vacation, our mini vacation from the Dominican Republic. We had fun. Good. So thanks for safe travels for Rita and Ellie. And um, prayers for travel for anybody else. Anybody else? Any other joys or concerns? Any joys or concerns out in Zoom world? Okay, I'm not hearing anybody. So, hear these words from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. As God's children, dear children, then, take God as your example and follow Christ by loving as Christ loved you, giving himself up as an offering and a sacrifice to God. And so let us now with gladness present our tithes and our offerings from our life and from our labor unto our God. Here we go. Is it working now? Is, are you hearing me now? What were you saying, Rita? Chris, oh, yes. I did say something, I guess, at the beginning of worship. I thought I did. Chris is doing better, slowly but surely. Remember, he was, even if he's feeling well, he's supposed to be on vacation today. So he still wouldn't have come. And he still got a phone call from all of us because Zoom was being cranky this morning because there just wasn't enough to do before worship. And I thank Jonathan and Zach for helping, helping out getting things together before worship. And I thank Sam and Lawrence for helping get things together before worship that we wouldn't have expected that we needed to do. So it was quite the exciting morning. Okay, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Stay seated. Hey. 
May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call. God of hope, we pray for the world you have given us, and we pray for all of the people in it, especially for those in places of conflict or danger this day. We pray especially for the people of Maui, the people of Northwest Canada who have had to be evacuated in the face of wildfires, the people of Mexico and Southern California who are in the path of the storm, and for people all around the world who are refugees or in trouble because of natural disasters or war, the people of Ukraine and the soldiers of Russia, the people of Sudan, the people of Syria, the people of Palestine, and the people who are fleeing violence in so many places, people who do not know where their homes are. We pray for those women and men who lay down their lives for the safety of brothers and sisters and neighbors wherever they might be. And we pray for our leaders, for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around this world, that they might lead us into your truth your freedom, your peace. We pray for our world, O oh God, and we pray for ourselves. Form us and reform us to make a difference. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call. God who fills our lives, we pray for those in special need this day. We pray for those without homes or hope. We pray for those who are imprisoned or alone. We pray for those who are ill or infirm, especially Sam's Aunt Effia. We pray for families, those who are able to be together today, like Helen and Stan and Travis, families who wish they could be together today, people who are traveling, that they may travel safely. The clients at the food pantry where we help with feeding, that there may be enough that we may find it in our hearts and the community may find it in all our hearts to make sure there is more. We pray for those who mourn. Oh, and we pray for Chris and we hope he feels better. We pray for those in need, O oh God, and we pray for ourselves. Form us and reform us to make a difference. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new faithful when we hear Christ's call. God of justice, we pray for your holy church, for this congregation gathered here, for our sisters and brothers in and around North and New Brunswick, for churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands, and especially First Presbyterian Church of Titusville as they celebrate 
185 years of ministry. And for the Presbyterian Church USA, her colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries, and for everyone who proclaims your good news wherever they might be. Form us, O oh God, reform us again and again and again, that we may make a difference and be the difference that you require. May the God of healing free the world from fear, freeing us from peace both treasured and pursued. May the God of love keep our commitment clear to a world restored to human life renewed. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Thinking for a world that's new. Faithful when we hear Christ call. God of healing, God of freedom, God of love, hear our prayers and keep our commitment clear. By your spirit, help us work for peace, share our joy, and work for a new world, faithful to the call of Christ, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new. Faithful when we hear Christ call. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen.